Bedrock Linux is one of the most unusual, fascinating, and misunderstood projects in the Linux world. And to truly understand what makes it so different, it's necessary to step back and think about what a Linux distribution even is. For decades, Linux users have chosen a single Distributed Debian Arch, Fedora Gentoo, Void, OpenX, or any of the others based on what they need. But every distro has strengths and weaknesses. Some are stable but outdated. Some are fast but lack features. Some offer powerful package managers, while others offer massive repositories. But in the end, every user faces the same limitation. Choosing a single distro always means giving something up. Bedrock Linux exists for the people who refuse to accept that limitation. It is the distro that says, why choose only one when you can have the best of all of them? To someone hearing this for the first time, it sounds absurd. How can one system simultaneously use Arch's rolling release packages, Debian's stability, Fedora's innovation, Alpine's ultralight binaries, and Void's clean run it in its system, all together at the same time in one unified environment? Most people would assume that such a system would require virtualization, containers, or but Bedrock Linux does not rely on any of those. Instead, it modifies the underlying structure of a Linux installation so that multiple distros can coexist as strata, each providing its own software, its own libraries, and its own tools, while the user decides which layer provides which component. The result is something that feels impossible, one Linux system that is effectively many systems merged into one. To appreciate how ambitious this is, imagine running Debian Stable as your reliable base, offering mature and thoroughly vetted software. Then imagine using Pac-Man from Arch Linux to install the absolute latest version of your favorite desktop environment, whether that's GNOME, KDE, Plasma, or something more experimental. At the same time, you might want Alpine Linux's tiny, muzzle-based binaries for background tasks or server utilities. Maybe you want Fedora's cutting-edge Wayland stack. Perhaps you also want access to Gentoo's portage for extremely customized source builds. And while doing all this, you still want one seamless file system, one consistent home directory, one operating system that boots normally and behaves like a single machine. Bedrock Linux is designed to make exactly that scenario possible. The core idea behind Bedrock is simple in concept but extremely challenging in implementation. It slices different Linux distributions into layers called strata. Each stratum contains a complete file system of a particular dist But instead of keeping these file systems isolated from each other, Bedrock merges them in a controlled way. The user decides which stratum provides which executable, which library, which package manager, which version of an application, and even which init system. Bedrock's own tooling ensures the layers can interact without stepping on each other's toes. Though users must still be careful when mixing incompatible components, as Bedrock intentionally targets advanced Linux users. What makes Bedrock so appealing to enthusiasts is the freedom it offers. For decades, Linux users argued endlessly about which distro was best. Arch users praised the rolling release model and the AURD. Users swore by stability and reliability. Fedora users valued innovation and new technologies adopted early. Ubuntu users appreciated ease of use and community support. Gentoo users celebrated absolute control and extreme customization. Void and Alpine users appreciated simplicity and efficiency. Each community had its philosophy, and each distro built its own identity. But with Bedrock Linux, these identities no longer conflict. The user becomes free to combine them into a super distribution that reflects their personal priorities instead of the distro maintainer's choices. Imagine a scenario where you run Debian for its predictable and dependable base system but prefer the latest GNOME desktop environment that Arch Linux offers. With Bedrock, you can install the Arch Stratum, grab GNOME through Pacman, and run it seamlessly inside your Debian-based environment. Your display manager doesn't care which distro supplied the desktop environment. You can mix and match at will. Or maybe you want Void's Run It because you dislike Bedrock lets you pull in the Void Stratum and use Run It without abandoning software from other disks. Or let's say you want to use Fedora's updated Pipewire stack because it provides better Wayland compatibility for your hardware. Uh, just add the Fedora Stratum. Bedrock doesn't force you to commit to one ecosystem. It becomes a universal adapter for Linux distributions. The installation process itself is different from traditional distro. You usually begin by installing a normal Linux distribution, Debian, Ubuntu, Arch, Fedora, or something else. And then Bed Bedrock's installer transforms your existing system into a Bedrock system by restructuring the file system and installing the necessary tools to manage strata. This is another feature that makes Bedrock unique. It allows you to convert an existing installation instead of starting fresh. 
People who maintain long-term Linux installations with custom configurations and deeply personalized setups love this because they do not have to wipe their system to join the Bedrock world. They simply keep their existing base and add new distros on top of it. But Bedrock Linux is not for beginners. And its developers openly state that. Using it requires an understanding of Linux file systems, how package managers work, what library dependencies are, and how different distributions structure their systems. When mixing software from multiple distributions, conflicts can arise. Package versions may differ, library paths may clash, and some components may simply not be compatible. Bedrock provides tools to manage this complexity, but it does not hide it. It assumes the user is knowledgeable enough to troubleshoot issues. In that sense, Bedrock is similar to Gen 2 or Arch. It offers extraordinary power, but expects the user to know what they are doing. However, for those who understand Linux deeply and love experimenting, Bedrock opens up an entirely new dimension. For example, imagine you want the stability of Debian, but want access to Arch's gigantic AUR ecosystem. Traditionally, you might dual boot, or use a VM, or maybe run an Arch crude, but those approaches separate your systems and make integration difficult. With Bedrock, or packages can feel native. You can install Discord, Steam, or any other AUR application directly into your Arch stratum and launch it like any other native program. Or perhaps you want Fedora Silverblue's containerized toolchains while still keeping a traditional Debian environment. Bedrock lets you mix those as well. Another compelling use case is software development. Suppose you're a developer who works with multiple languages and tools. Some distros ship older versions of compilers, interpreters, and libraries. Others ship leading edge versions. With Bedrock, you can choose exactly which versions you want from whichever distro provides them. If you need Debian stable GCC for one project, but Arch's latest LLVM for another, you can have both available simultaneously. If you need Alpine's muzzle-based environment to test static builds while using Gentoo's portage for fine-tuned compilation flags, Bedrock lets you do all of this on the same machine without resorting to Docker, LXC, or virtual machines. Freedom is the fundamental philosophy behind Bedrock Linux, much like the open source ethos itself. But Bedrock's idea of freedom is extreme compared to traditional dis- It removes the boundaries altogether. Instead of living inside the philosophy of Debian, Arch, or Fedora, you create your own philosophy. You pick and choose components like a buffet of Linux features. Even major architectural differences that traditionally divide distros are no longer barriers. System versus run it versus open art becomes a matter of preference rather than distro loyalty. Repository formats like Deb, RPM, or Pacman coexist without conflict because each package manager remains confined to its own stratum. Yet all software integrates into one environment. Performance in Bedrock Linux is another interesting topic. Many people assume that merging multiple distributions into one system would introduce overheads similar to VMS or containers. But Bedrock does not use full virtualization. It modifies the root file system and uses a combination of symlinks, bind mounts, and clever path redirection to unify Strata. In most cases, the performance is just as fast as running the software natively on its original disk. Since there is no containerization overhead or VM emulation, applications run at full speed. This makes Bedrock especially appealing for gaming, multimedia editing, and high-performance computing. Users can take advantage of Arch's rapid updates for gaming libraries like Mesa or drivers from Fedora while keeping a stable Debian environment for professional workloads. The result is a hybrid system optimized for both reliability and latest generation performance. Bedrock's approach also changes how users think about maintaining their system. Instead of managing one distro, you're essentially managing several at once. Each stratum has its own package manager, its own update cycle, and its own set of repositories. This means you can keep a stable base while selectively upgrading only the distros you rely on for cutting-edge software. If Arch pushes a risky update that breaks something, you can simply disable that stratum temporarily and fall back on a stable one. Or if you want to test the latest version of a tool available on Fedora but fear it might cause problems, you can install Fedora as a stratum, test it, and remove it safely if things don't work out. This modular approach to system maintenance is something no other Linux distribution offers at this level. With that, said Bedrock Linux is not trying to replace mainstream disk. Its developers emphasize that it is a niche project intended for advanced users who understand the risks and responsibilities of mixing multiple ecosystems. The documentation, while thorough, assumes familiarity with Linux internals. Many common Linux support communities may not be willing to help troubleshoot issues on Bedrock because problems might come from the interactions between distros rather than an issue with the software itself. 
This is similar to how Arch users sometimes face challenges when asking for support while running a heavily modified system. Bedrock users must be comfortable with experimentation, self-diagnoses, and the occasional need to manually resolve conflicts. Despite the complexity, Bedrock inspires fascination because it challenges the traditional idea of what a Linux distribution is. Instead of being a pre-packaged collection of choices made by maintainers, it becomes an open canvas for advanced users. It blurs the line between distros and exposes how similar they all are beneath their philosophies and package managers. Under the hood, all Linux distros share the same kernel POSIX behavior and common standards. Bedrock highlights this unity by allowing them to interoperate in ways that many people never imagined. The long-term relevance of Bedrock Linux also raises interesting questions about the future of Linux. As more distributions adopt strict philosophies such as immutable files, atomic updates or containerized application models, Bedrock becomes a way to break free from these restrictions without giving up the benefits. For example, Fedora Silverblue is immutable, but you can add it as a stratum in Bedrock for its development toolboxes without adopting Silverblue's entire paradigm. Or if you want to experiment with the latest Ubuntu packages but dislike some of Canonical's design choices, Bedrock lets you add Ubuntu without committing fully to it. In a world where Linux is becoming more specialized and segmented, Bedrock acts as the bridge that reconnects all those worlds. There is also a philosophical beauty to Bedrock Linux. Linux, by nature, is modular. Everything is supposed to be interchangeable kernels, shells, display servers, window managers, libraries, but distributions often bundle these components in tightly integrated ways. Bedrock returns to the Unix philosophy of composability by allowing users to compose their ideal system from the parts they want, regardless of origin. It's a celebration of Linux's openness and flexibility, pushing the concept to its limits. For power users, the appeal is enormous. You can run Firefox from Fedora, Steam from Arch, servers from Debian, lightweight networking tools from Alpine, and custom builds from Gentoo all simultaneously, sharing the same home directory, the same graphical environment, and the same kernel. You can even choose which stratum provides a specific command. Want else from CoreUtils in Void, but prefer the Arch version of Neo. Want to run two different versions of Python from two different districts. Also possible. Bedrock turns the idea of packaged versions into something fluid. It's software freedom taken to an extreme. A build your own super distro experience that no other project really attempts. Yet Bedrock Linux remains. Relatively unknown, Outside advanced circles, because it doesn't aim to be user-friendly or mass market, it is complex, technical, and demands responsibility. But its existence expands the landscape of what Linux can be. It stands as proof that the Linux world still has room for radical experimentation. Not every project needs to chase beginners or popularity. Bedrock is a playground for experts, tinkerers, developers, and explorers. It's for the people who spend their weekends customizing dot files, building kernels, compiling software, and testing new technologies just to learn how things work. Bedrock also teaches an important lesson about the nature of Linux fragmentation. People often criticize the Linux ecosystem for being fragmented, with too many distros and too many different approaches. But Bedrock shows that fragmentation can be a strength when you have a way to unify those fragments without forcing them to conform to one set of rules. Instead of choosing between distros, users can assemble the exact combination they want. Fragmentation becomes modularity, and modularity becomes flexibility. In a strange way, Bedrock transforms the diversity of the Linux ecosystem into a single, cohesive experience. In the end, Bedrock Linux represents something rare, a project that dares to rethink the fundamentals of what a Linux distribution is. It takes the freedom and modularity of Linux to an extreme that most people never imagined possible. It doesn't try to win over beginners or become the next mainstream desktop system. It doesn't try to simplify Linux or hide its complexity. Instead, it embraces that complexity and gives power users the ultimate toolkit to build exactly the system they want without compromise. Bedrock is Linux for people who believe choice should not be limited and who enjoy the challenge of crafting their ideal environment from the best components of every dis. The story of Bedrock Linux is not about mass adoption or simplicity. It is about innovation, experimentation, and pushing boundaries. 
It is a testament to the creativity of the Linux community and the endless possibilities of open source software for those brave enough to dive into it. Bedrock is not just an operating system, it is an exploration of what Linux can become when limitations are removed and curiosity leads the way.